start with the obvious question of how long was this project sort of percolating in your, your head? How long did it take to develop and actually get it? A really long time. Yeah, um, I, yeah it, it was it was a story I couldn't quite crack. I mean, I, it, it felt to me like um, the place you always want to be, I think, is the place nobody else is. And it felt like uh, this was a story that hadn't been told in a really long time. Um, I think, I mean, there's the obvious, you know, there's there's the Disney version, um, but it's a Disney version. You know, I mean, I think it's uh, it's it's an adventure. It's a bit of a cartoon, um, in a good way. Um, but the reality of this world had never really been explored. Um, and so Robert and I read everything we could get our hands on um, about them, about the world they lived in. We read a lot of social histories that really had nothing to do with them, just to understand where they came from, um, which then really made it clear that we had no idea what this was about. And, and I don't know that anybody has any real idea of what this was about, um, if what you're, what you're basing it on are the movies you've seen. Um, so, you know, we read, um, we played the different versions of the story. We sold the show almost three years ago. Um, so it's been a, a very long throw. Um, it's exciting now to be able to finally show it to people that you start to forget that we're actually not making this for ourselves, that there's people out <laughs> yeah. there who are going to watch it. So. so. Um, at the panel, there's guidelines about no pirates and exiles. Are there other cliches you guys are staying away from, like walking the planks, swabbing decks? Um, <laughs> all of them. Um, uh, religiously. Um, I mean, some of it, um, you know, uh, cliche is cliche because it's, there's some truth to it, but um, I, I think we, we really wanted to root the audience in a feeling of, um, of uh, this is reality. This is a reality um, that, is, uh, that is a story about people who um, wake up in the morning and realize they have to go fight a whole bunch of people to, you know, to, to make the money that they're going to need to live, and that it's it's work. Um, that's a version of this I've never seen before. And so in order to do that, I think you have to strip it all away. Um, you have to strip away all of the clues that I think an audience um, starts to um, be, be, uh, be key to, I guess, that, that, that um, you're in the world that you expect it to be. You're in, you're in the Pirates of the Caribbean, Errol Flynn, Johnny Depp world. Um, and so some of it, like I said, some of it comes back in, but I, I think we're really trying to, um, to strip it all down. And, um, and, and, and hopefully the audience will feel like you're seeing something new. You say uh, taking away the elements of the, the more cartoonish image of pirates for this, but also in your research of the era of that uh, lifestyle, did you find something that hadn't really been explored yet in uh, film or television that you really thought could make this stand out even more? Or something you yeah, a, a lot. I mean, it, it was really, it, it was the, the process of doing the research was, uh, was really eye-opening for us. Um, you know, you don't realize um, the story. The story I'd always been told, um, or always had seen, was that um, these guys are, you know, that they're bloodthirsty, that they're, that the violence is the attraction to it. And when you start to think about it, the violence is actually exactly what they don't. Want. If they want the stuff, then what they want is to make you afraid of the violence, so that you will give up your stuff without having to fight and damage it. Um, that's cool. That's now we're talking about branding. We're talking about how these guys were able to create a narrative that, that um, you know, that was self-serving, but that, 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 put it this way, that the narrative they've created looks a lot more like the movies you've seen than the reality of what they were living in. Um, and that was just a component of it. I mean, there's so much about it um, that um, politically, um, in, in every direction, um, felt like a show. Um, it, it felt like um, the shows that, that are the reasons why I want to make TV, um, Deadwood and Sopranos and The Wire, um, it, it just felt like a place where um, the office politics of it were, were fascinating enough to, to carry a story. Could you take a step back, John, and maybe give us, this is terribly pedantic, but maybe give us the overall framework, sort of the premise of the series, because we were talking with some of the actors and the characters, but I, I was sort of interested in how this all fits together in terms of... It is, um, it is 
very loosely structured as a prequel to Treasure Island. So there is a, a, a Treasure Island mythology that, that runs through it um, in Captain Flint and John Silver and Billy Bones and other characters that are coming down the road. Um, so that's uh, our through. At the same time, it is taking place in a, um, a historically true, real, I guess, um, uh, place in Nassau um, where England left, um, where there was no flag, there was no law, um, and these people had to figure out how to make it work on their own. Um, and so there are historical characters that, 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 that are a part of it, and Charles Vane and Anne Bonnie and Jack Rackham and Benjamin Hornigold. And, um, so that's a component of this place. Um, and then I think the, the, the glue, or the third piece that's keeping it all together, are um, characters that we've put together out of composites of other people. Um, and Eleanor Guthrie, and Max, and, um, and, and Gates, um, that, uh, that hopefully are, are, are keeping those two worlds working together. So, given the fact that you know you are kind of working with you know the sort of fictional world with your captain, how did you decide which of the historical figures to sort of bring in and work with, like you know, like your Charles Vane or Calico Jack? Um, more than they were, um, uh, uh, they were kings. They were they were servants of these people, mm -hmm. um, and so they're almost they're they're projections of the crew more than they are. Um, Leader. But yeah, I, mean, I think you want you want the personalities, and I think you want to understand um, how all of these people somehow coexisted in the place because they did. I mean, we, we got the question a lot early on: why don't they all kill each other? Um, and the first answer was, I'm not sure, but they did. So you know, somehow there's you know, these people figured out that um, they needed each other, or that they needed some part of each other. But how does like a, a flint vary from uh, a vein, for example, in terms of the dynamics within your, your story? I think they all want something different. I mean, I think that the, 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 the key, to, I think, to a story like this is there's never there's never a they. Um, there's never a they want money or they want violence or they want whatever. It's that everybody's there for a different reason. Um, some of them have um, political um, commitments and ideals. Um, some of them want the money. Some of them are psychopaths. I mean, it, it attracted that. So I think you have to service all of them and, and be able to understand. Um, you can't really understand that in any one person. I think every, each one of these characters needs to be another piece of the, of the puzzle to, um, to, to convey what this world is. I think we wanted to, um, as part of understanding what this world must have been like, um, I can't believe that there weren't women who had a role to play in it, especially in this place where um, there were no rules. I, mean, I think the, the deeper you get into the frontier, the less anybody cares what you look like. You know, I mean, I think at that point, um, when your survival is at stake, things become a meritocracy very quickly. Um, and so that character for us was the, um, the, the, the portrayal of that, that she's, um, she's driven, um, she is smart, and she is exploiting um, a, an opportunity that she probably wouldn't have anywhere else in the world at that point in time to have power, um, and, you know, to, to um, both because of her birth and, and her connection to her father, um, and because of who she is um, and her willingness to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys and to um, be willing to use her, um, her economic clout and her political clout um, as a trump to the violence that they do. Um, in, in some ways, um, violence is scary, but not eating tomorrow is scarier. And the, the fact that she controls it is something that um, they can search for. How long do you see this going on in an ideal world? I mean, obviously, it's great news that you've already been renewed. Do you have a sort of a long-range plan for this? We do. I mean, I think these things feel healthiest to me when you have a, a, a very good sense of where you're going, but you're not entirely sure you're going to get there. Um, it's, it has to be organic that way. Um, I think when they become, these things become too rigid, you start forcing them into the story. So um, we know where we're going. I think we have a pretty good sense of where we're going. Um, as we're now deep into um, writing season two, um, we have hopefully a very good season with that. Um, 
but yeah, I hope to show you guys a long time. And I think there's there's so much story to get there. There's so much stuff about this world um, that's still exciting to us. And 